Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to my shop. boys and girls looks look what arrived today yeah an aluminium heat exchanger <laughs> or as we what we refer to down here in uh, eastern Tennessee a radiator but anyway the dimensions look right the uh, filler net the hose nets they look right and uh, transmission cooler lines they look like in the right spot now you can tell there's a lot of welding done on this see how smooth and here's the original tank uh needless to say i like the looks of the original better but doing a, a a weight test it uh the aluminum is probably five at least five pounds lighter maybe even more it's just a lot lighter and uh it did come with a problem and uh, I'll show you what gave me an inkling that I did have a problem with it. Here's the box it came in. If you notice, right here and right here. They did not pack this thing very good. There's your styrofoam, all right? And uh, here's your bubble wrap. If, uh, what happened was, my guess is with, uh, FedEx, that's who delivered it. So somewhere between the uh the original provider of this maybe the manufacturer to the middleman sh their shipping and then the shipping to me the uh nets filler neck or hose nets there and there uh protruded somewhat out of the uh, box well and that's uh, there was plastic covers i've done taking them off on them but what it did was, uh, here, let me uh, put this up where I can show better. Okay, the bottom filler neck is fine. I don't see any problem with it. The top filler neck, the top part was mashed down just a hair. And with this uh, socket right here and some heat from my mat gas, I was able to round this thing back up. So I've got it going good. And uh, I think it's going to hold. We'll know here shortly. The rest of the radiator looks good, so hopefully it survived the shipping. My well, light is a feather. It's so easy. Go underneath and get the bottom. All 
All right, we're going to hook up the top hose now. Okay, we've got the heater hoses connected. They've stayed connected. Got the upper and lower radiator hose connected. What we're going to do now is we're going to pump this boy up. First, we'll do about 5 PSI. Let's see what we get. The hose will keep it from going. Cap that came on, it says 1, 1. 1.1. I don't know what that means. It's in uh, Korean or Japanese, one or the other. So, I don't know. We'll try five pounds first. It's pumping up. There's five pounds. We'll see if it holds it. And let me get me some uh, soapy spray. No bubbles yet. Hold steady at five. I think we'll just leave it at that for a while. Let's see. Of course, this, uh, according to the old cap, should go to 16. And I'm going to take my time pumping it up. Especially where I had to uh, fix it up there. He seems to be doing all right. So far, so good. We'll come back in about 15 minutes. We'll see if it's still at. Well, all right. It's been about a half an hour and uh, went out there and uh, cleaned up the shroud and gave it a coat of uh, flat black. So it'll be probably, it'll be in mere moments to you all, but it's going to be another day before I, I put, attempt to put it in. And, uh, but more importantly, we're still at five pounds, a half hour later. So it's holding. Uh, all the soap is drained away. So if there was, well... With the original radiator, it, it just took moments before I started seeing both. Now, this right. is a three-row fully aluminum radiator, which should uh, function as a, a, more, a much better heat exchanger than that copper uh, OEM one. So I guess we'll, we'll see. I'm going to take it to 10. I should know better, but I'm going to do it slowly. It's... Ten. 
Let's see if it holds. If it holds, I ain't pumping it no more. That's it. All right. Cool. It's, uh, well, I guess I'll have to go ahead and put the, uh, I guess I'll go ahead and put the transmission cooler lines on now because they, uh, it appears like it's going to hold. Welcome. Uh, today we're going to put that, uh, that shroud in and get everything hooked up and uh, do a pressure test and hopefully everything will go well. Now, uh, unfortunately, when I went to do the shroud, which I feel is the, uh, the main topic of this particular video, I don't know what happens with this new camera setup I got, but there's no audio again. Uh, there's video, but no audio, and I'm trying to explain stuff as I go, and unless you can read lips, uh, oh well. You can pretty much see, though, and I can't remember what I was saying anyway. It was pretty something pretty very intelligent and uh, insightful and probably funny, too, no doubt. But anyway... So there'll be music playing with it, and that's why, because the audio of that particular episode did not record. So, oh well. Stay tuned, and let's get busy.
All right, we're underneath. I've already got the driver's side lined up to the stud right here. Now I'm trying to get the passenger side. There we go. All right. And we got them both in there. That's what secures the shroud to the uh, lower radiator. Now, I, actually, I need a piece of that foam to go right there. All right, let me uh, let me find it, and hopefully it'll stick. I would move the camera, but if the uh, that boom mic just makes it to where I can't hardly move it anywhere. So I'm securing the uh, lower shroud now to the uh, radiator supports. All right, let's go up top and see what we got. We look good underneath here. sure those two bolts are. I didn't loosen them, I don't think.
matter. Well, if it didn't have a log washer, it's getting one. And then what? And there's just about a thread hanging out there at that end. All right. Be a hair too tight. I don't know. We'll see. Let's tighten this bottom one up. I wish I had picked up some antifreeze. <laughs> I am going to pressure test again. All right. All right. I've got him pumped up to 10 pounds. I don't know if you can make that out. But it's uh, it's been holding for about 10 minutes now. And I did a little bit of spraying. And uh, I'm not seeing any leakage and it's holding. So we may be lucking out this time. I wished I would have uh, already got my antifreeze. I could put the old stuff in, but no, no way. It's green, but uh, who knows how long it's been in there. So I'm going to do, uh, utilize my 15% discount and uh, pre-buy it and go pick it up. And then we'll test fire this puppy up. Hopefully, it'll do fine. All right, it's time. Fill it up. Are we making a mess? Of course, it's going to be hard to see if I'm leaking when I spill all over the damn place. All 
I know I pulled more than that out of there. So what we'll do Hook the battery up. Start this puppy up. Hold on. I've disconnected the power to the distributor. What I want to do is turn it over. I want to listen to any kind of sounds or unusual anything. And maybe see if it'll build up some oil pressure since I did have the oil pump on. pressure with the turning over and uh, that should have put fuel into the uh, carburetor so I'm gonna hook it up floor it a couple times to set the choke let's see what happens all right let's take a look at that antifreeze has it gone down any no a little bit Here we go. The moment of the truth.
on my life. <laughs> to warm up. Twenty minutes. Look here. It's not even hot to the touch up here. Upper radiator hose is hot, so I believe it did finally open because at one point I seen the temperature inside running up to uh, oh, getting close to 180. Then I come out here and did some checking, and I believe when I went back and looked, it was I don't know under 180. So. That tells me the uh, thermostat must have opened and it started cooling. Well, all right. Looks like we're finally getting to the end of this one procedure that snowballed into a whole bunch of different jobs. But anyway, I do have to get the hood back on. And uh, once it uh, warms up a little bit here in the shop and Brother Carl gets off of work, I'll get him to help me manhandle that one. And... Uh, we can say that this particular uh, job is done with the exception of a good road test. So that'll be coming up. I take it down now, but there's some other things I want to do. Uh, but th before I get into that, let me get into this uh, a quick review. The original problem was the uh, 
Time and chain was so loose and the Teflon had wore off the cam gear so much that the chain was slapping the side of the, uh, the time and chain cover, making a rattling noise that, uh, uh, that needed to be fixed before it uh, finally failed and left me stranded out somewhere. It got me home, so that puts this bed in the keeper category for now anyway. But uh, in order to get to that chain, uh, I didn't study as good as I should. I just started after it, and I ended up pulling off more stuff than I needed to, namely the radiator. Now, the reason why I say that is because in pulling the radiator to get the shroud out, because I needed to get the shroud out to get access in there, and I thought I had to do that, I put a hole in the, in the original radiator that had no problem whatsoever before. I had no overheating problems at all, no leaks. I went to get it fixed. Well, more than like they did fix that hole, but my guess is I probably put another hole in it, putting it back in, and two other spots leaked that uh, I couldn't have done. I'm pretty sure I couldn't have done because of where they were located, so more than likely. The radiator was wore out, and uh, all the work they'd done to it, pressure testing, dipping, and everything, probably uh, weakened it to that point to where it was just a matter of time before it would fail. So what I should have done is went ahead and got a new radiator instead of getting it repaired. So, you know, but you win some, you lose some. I ended up buying a three-row aluminum radiator. Got it in, uh, pressure tested it, it worked good. Now I had a few problems from shipping, so I might not recommend this particular brand because it wasn't, it really wasn't packed good. But after I straightened up the upper uh, hose neck uh, on it, it was kind of flattened a little bit due to the shipping uh it's holding pressure good and it did fine so uh but i did get it through amazon anyway uh so we got the chain in i did not replace the uh water pump i also decided that uh while i was under it i noticed so many dings and dang and bends in my uh oil pan that i decided to replace it and since i had the oil pan off i decided i would uh Go ahead and replace the rear oil, main oil seal. If I couldn't tell that it was leaking, but the gasket was leaking on the pan and it was leaking around the timing chain, but I couldn't tell, but I figured I'm at that point, let's replace it. So I replaced the uh, rear main oil seal, put a new oil pan on it with a thick Felpro one piece gasket that knock on wood seems to be holding good. Now, I've only got about maybe an hour run time on this now, and I haven't got a drip of leak anywhere. Of course, that's not out here running hard, so we'll see. But, uh, so, new oil pump. Uh, no, I didn't replace oil pump. New oil pan, filter, rear, main oil. And I went with a two-row Croils uh, timing chain and gears over going with a one row, single row like the OEM. And it's not Teflon coated. In my testing, I can't tell that it's any louder than the Teflon coated one was. So uh, my recommendation would be if you're going to have to replace that uh, time and chain, uh, if you're going to say what stay close to OEM, don't go with the uh, Teflon coated one. That's just a problem waiting to uh, occur because it had clogged, nearly clogged up the pickup screen in my oil pump from all the Teflon chips that fell off. So anyway, got it in. The hardest part of this job that, uh, well, the part that caused the most problem was the shroud, getting the shroud in and out. Uh, like I said earlier, I, I don't know if it was in this one or another uh, episode, that uh, from the tip of this bumper to the engine, front of this engine is four feet. You would think in four feet you would have a whole lot of room to work with, right? No, sir, not in a C3 Corvette. So uh, you end up, you're going to have to take more parts off than you bargained for to get to the, get that uh, shroud out. But that's just part of, uh, part of the deal of owning the C3, <laughs> as I'm finding out. So, like I say, it's not coming down off the stands now because I got some more work to do. I've got some front shocks I want to put on it. 
I want to put a new rag joint on it. I want to get the, I've got the rear parking brake shoes and mechanisms, everything installed on the rear axles and it's ready to go. All I need to do is, is the new cable that I do have is uh, install it because the one that's in there is locked up, froze solid. Uh, I tried to free it up, no way. So I'm just going to replace that cable. So I'm going to get that done too. Although I rarely use the parking brake since this is an automatic. And last, well, not last but not least, what I've got the parts for at this time is I've got a new circuit board to go in that tack that uh, obviously is out. I know I'm getting good tack signal out of the HEI distributor. I know the wiring's good to it, and that is a common fail point on a 47-year-old car. So I got the board, and uh, I'm ready to put that in. You know, what's funny is I purchased that from a local uh, uh, vet supply house here, which uh, is handy to have, Vol Vet. I'll give them a shout out. But the board says uh, uh, it's from uh, Wilcox. So, and from what I hear, the Wilcox board is, is, is your top of the line replacement. So, all right. So that's a good thing. It's just getting to it. So anyway. Hope everything's going good with you and yours. Everything's going good here. Can't complain. It won't do me no good to complain anyway. You just got to take care of the business and carry on. So, have a good one. And I hope to see you around on the next one. And when it comes to this bet, there will be some next ones. Also, there will be some on that uh, 49 Chevy pickup truck coming up too. i got a few things I want to work out on it since I'm driving. But anyway... Have a good one, and I hope to see you around on the next one. See you.